Hello, hello, more dimmers here and today I would like to jump into a Magnus Carlsen Invitational 2020 tournament and that's the biggest and the most exciting uh, online tournament so far ever organized and so we have eight the world's best players in rapid chess and they compete online on the chess24 platform for um, $250,000 prize fund and the winner gonna take $70,000 and it begins with the single round robin so everybody gonna play with everybody and the top scoring players qualifying for the final four knockout and each match between these players it's not a single game it's four 15 plus 10 rapid games okay so the winner earning three match points but if it's a draw two to two uh, then single armageddon game is played where white has five minutes and black has four minutes but black uh, needs only draw to win this last game and the match of course and the armageddon winner gets two points and the loser get one point that makes uh, very much sense and there is one more rule uh, no draws offers are allowed before move 40. so i would like to show you one of the games from the match uh, of Hikaru Nakamura uh, and Magnus Carlsen okay Hikaru Nakamura this was decisive all games were decisive in this match so very sharp very interesting very exciting uh, first game was won by Magnus Carlsen then Nakamura uh, won the game then Magnus Carlsen again Nakamura again and in the final Armageddon uh, Magnus Carlsen won with black pieces so pretty exciting stuff and I would like to show you the game number two. So Magnus Carlsen is leading the match 1-0. Uh, he won the first game and here is the second game. Very exciting one and I choose this one for the reason. And Magnus Carlsen, uh, he is the world champion uh, in blitz, uh, in rapid and in standard time format. He's 29 years old and his standard ranking 2863, but in rapid he's even stronger 2881. And Hikaru Nakamura, uh, his standard ranking 2736, but he is really, really good uh, in rapid and in blitz. In rapid, his ranking 2829. And I will just tell you that in blitz blitz uh, his ranking is 2900 incredible and he is a veteran of chess 32 years old so without further ado let's jump into the game naka opens with e4 we have e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop b5 so Rui lopez on the board we have a6 bishop a4 knight f6 castle by naka and b5 bishop b3 and here the most popular move uh, was always bishop on b7 but uh, maybe now a uh, slightly more popular bishop c5 uh, we have a4 challenging these pawns and of course we have a threat uh, white if takes then black cannot take it back so uh, we have rook on b8 and here c3 is the most popular move a takes on b5 it's quite normal move but naka goes for the win so he has to choose the sharpest lines possible and that's what the, his chess about he play knight on e5 okay opening the position completely black king still in the center so naka just attack we have knight on e5 now d4 getting back the material and opening the diagonal for the bishop uh, we have bishop on d4 queen on d4 and now d6 stabilizing the position defending the knight we have f4 attacking this knight uh, and here magnus carlsen also could go for some very sharp line like c5 and this is pretty crazy because after queen on d1 knight e on g4 and now uh, c4 is coming so white would have to play c3 or c4 or maybe e5 the the very sharp line uh, however magnus carlsen didn't go for the line with c5 he prefer a more stable uh, he fight for a draw he don't need to win he just can wait 
and see what Naka gonna do and then counter attack if he has the possibility. Knight on c6. Uh, so queen is under attack. Queen on c3 harassing the knight. Knight e7 and now a takes on b5, a takes on b5 and now e5. So Naka still attacking and something has to be done. Knight e4 with tempo on the queen and now very normal line played many times before queen on e1 and after knight on c5 uh, bishop would be under attack uh, and then just castle and the game can continue however naka play queen on f3 uh, and the line continue in the similar fashion so we have knight on c5 bishop on a2 and castle and here naka play bishop e3 uh, threatening the attack on the knight. First, we have bishop on b7 by Magnus Carlsen attacking the queen, so queen has to be moved, queen h3. And now knight on e4, very beautiful outpost, not standard outpost with the, uh, with the pawn protecting the, the knight, but still, this knight is very powerful here and so powerful that Naka decide uh, to remove it. And he didn't remove it by knight on d2, which could be more obvious, uh, because he don't want to lose the position of this bishop. So knight on d2, bishop on d2, rook a8, uh, keeping the rook on a1, this could be played. And after, for example, bishop on c3, uh, d e5, f takes on e5, bishop d5, this rook can't move, so uh, this rook can... Uh, pin the bishop uh, but simply queen e8 now bishop d5 and just after exchanging everything the game could continue uh, it's pretty drawish line so naka didn't go for that uh, he played different line but he have even more interesting line he could go straight for the attack f5 and this is pretty interesting and I will show you the difference between this line and this was Nak what Naka played. So for example D takes on E5. Now this pawn uh, is very lonely in attack but it's enough. So uh, for example Knight on C3 and after Knight takes on C3, B takes on C3, Bishop D5. Now F6, here is the move, here is the move. Very brutal attack and now knight have to do something so uh, g takes on f6 is possible but this is also possible knight g6 and after fg7 rook on e8 rook a on d1 pinning the bishop c6 and then white would have very beautiful tactical ideas a lot of sharp uh, stuff here so for example rook f7 is the craziest one probably the strongest one and after king on f7 winning the rook yes but queen h7 now uh, double check is coming so uh, black have to react rook on g8 now bishop d8 and now rook f1 with check very sharp line and white are down the rook but this position is much better for uh, for white and uh, white gonna win that so uh, this would be very very interesting but naka went straight for knight c3 first so he didn't go for f5 okay and you will see the difference so uh, knight on c3 now double the pawns here uh, on the c file and now bishop d5 and yes f5 now but there is a difference because now magnus carlsen can take on a2 which he did and we have rook on a2 and now f6 is coming what to do what black can do black can't play something like g6 because uh, you know challenging these pawns because f6 and now what you gonna do checkmate is coming you cannot go with the knight on f5 because rook gonna pick up this this knight and checkmate is still coming so you would have to sacrifice the the knight and lose the game for example h5 so definitely doesn't work f6 also doesn't work because of course e6 and this protected pass pawn is uh, very very powerful and annoying and black would be in the big trouble so magnus carlsen takes the pawn on e5 um, and okay we have f6 as planned and now g takes on f6 uh, but magnus carlsen could actually play knight d5 which 
probably would be much better option. And after f takes on g7, rook e8. And it looks like this pawn is a very, very dangerous pawn. But keep in mind that in positions like that, uh, this pawn is very often a much better shield uh, than own pawns. And it's better because white can't, you know, uh, attack on g7. Okay, it's impossible to play the bishop h6 and you know checkmate here because it's its own white pawn. So that's impossible. So the only weaknesses are um, f7 and h7. And look at this. Light square bishop doesn't exist. The, the, the knights doesn't exist. So how to attack? Only rooks and only the queen. Uh, that's three pieces and black have five pieces to defend if needed. Okay. So that would be pretty easy to uh, for black to defend. Uh, however, uh, Magnus Carlsen play g takes on f6 and his idea uh, is probably uh, move the king to h8, uh, move the rook on the semi open file and get the counter attack on the g file. However, who's going to be first? Uh, Hikaru play bishop on h6 attacking the rook. We have rook on e8. And now Hikaru didn't go for the f6 pawn. Uh, he didn't go because queen d1 with check. So uh, he would have to go back. And then Magnus could go back to d6 and then control 6 rank from here, including, you know, g6. So any ideas, you know, uh, mating ideas would just not work. Uh, rook a6, very nice move by Hikaru Nakamura. And it's not easy to defend especially in the in the rapid chess. So, uh, for example, c6 is just losing the pawn. White would just take this pawn and it's impossible to take it uh, because, of course, queen g4 and that is a checkmate. So uh, what black would have to play is rook on b6. OK, and that's the, the only move and it's not really so great. So uh, this is why Magnus Carlsen play rook on b6 first. Uh, we have rook takes on b6, c takes on b6 and now queen g3 threatening the checkmate. We have knight on g6 and now h4 with the idea h5. The knight is pinned. OK, so here is the idea. And Magnus Carlsen counter attack and play f5. We have h5, we have f4, and he'll feel free to pause the video and find the winning move for white while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So the only move is actually not moving queen on g4 okay staying on this file it's possible but after queen on h4 white ac actually have to move so uh, for example queen on f5 and then knight f8 and everything is fine in black position okay it's not so difficult to defend now of course the uh, white still have some pressure but white have to move the rook and bring the rook to the attack so uh not really easy still uh, however hikaru found better move h takes on g6 wow what a move that's just you know mind-blowing beautiful move beautiful attack and f takes on g3 would lose the game so magnus didn't play that and it would lose the game because g takes on f7 with check okay and the pawn is protected and also uh, these squares are controlled by the bishop so king h8 is the only move uh, and after a couple of exchanges of course, white is winning with extra bishop, so bishop would just pick up uh, some of the pieces. Uh, king would go to the center and win the game. So not this way. Uh, after h takes on g6, Magnus uh, also takes the pawn and now queen g4. And what to play as black? Black has three pawns for the bishop, but it's still, uh, you know, uh, one minor piece is much better in most of the situations. So uh, to create any counterplay, Magnus Carlsen have to do something with this with these pawns, which is uh, very difficult in this position. He should play queen on e7 first 
and then white uh, have to find some way to play so uh, rook on b1 or maybe rook on d1 you know with the attack on b5 or maybe uh, getting on the seventh rank and try the chances somewhere there so white would have to try to find the way to play however magnus carlsen play queen on c8 and he thought, okay, I can ask for exchange the queens, Hikaru not ask, but I still have time to defend f6, because f6 is the key square here. Because if white can get here, then there is a checkmate on g7, very dangerous threat. So uh, we have queen on h4, now threatening, of course, getting to f6 with the checkmate ideas. Magnus Carlsen play queen on c5 with check first, king h2, and now queen d6, queen d6, controlling f6, but also putting the queen on the same diagonal uh, with the king. Uh, it's pretty sneaky, however, bishop g5, this is beautiful move, so remember, if you cannot, uh, you know, checkmate in this position this way, you can reverse the, the order of the pieces, and, uh, and that's the idea here. So, uh, f5, making some space for the king, uh, supporting also uh, this march of the pawns, uh, we have rook on f3, so bringing another piece to the attack. Uh, we have e4, rook h3, and now f3 uh, as planned, as now this is a check. So uh, attacking with tempo, very nice idea, however it doesn't work. And king on f7 also doesn't work, uh, the king can't actually escape, uh, because black would just lose the rook. Uh, and the game of course so for example queen on h7 king e6 and now queen g6 uh, and king if king moves to d5 then the rook is lost uh, and if king on d7 then rook h7 with the same effect the rook is just lost rook e7 of course uh, is just is just losing the game because it's queen extra so of course it's uh, winning for white so f3 uh, is the only chance of magnus but it doesn't work this is a check and now white goes bishop f4 with tempo so defending with tempo queen has to be moved so queen d7 now controlling h7 but that's not enough because queen h8 now king f7 rook h7 and king e6 and we have a checkmate on e5 so uh, Hikaru Nakamura checkmated uh, Magnus Carlsen Magnus didn't resign before so also very nice game very fair play uh, behavior and congratulations to Hikaru Nakamura really nice attacking game I really enjoyed this and yeah, if you want to cover uh, another game from this tournament, let me know which one uh, I would love to hear from your recommendation. Leave the comment. And if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss. Smash the bell button and see you in the next one.